Okay, hello, welcome everyone. Maybe you could uh, spotlight uh, me, uh, Christy, while I'm talking. So um, thank you very much everyone for coming to our third lecture. I'm going to uh, share my screen and uh, welcome you formally with the title of the lecture. So here we go to that, whoops. And can you all see the painting with words on my screen? Yes. Christy, can you just confirm? Great, thank you. So um, the Society for Calligraphy is presenting our uh, master's lecture series, which is a new effort for the, from the Society for Calligraphy. Those of you that have been here already with, uh, for two of our lectures, we're very glad to see you back and to welcome anyone else who has just joined us. So uh, let's see. So uh, from Royal Scrolls to the St. John's Bible to Have I Had My Breakfast Yet? Master calligrapher Donald Jackson shares lessons and insights from a lifetime of working in letters. So today's program is going to be spreading the word, teaching, sharing, showing and telling, students and teachers learning from each other. I'm your moderator, Kitty Marriott, former uh, president of SFC, as is Christy Darwick, who is taking care of technical things uh, to make sure that everything moves forward uh, smoothly. So uh, we had this wonderful email from Douglas Habach. I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, uh, who sent this attachment on the right-hand side. He said, this is a photo of the end paper of a book that Donald inscribed right then and there, uh, right around 1981. And he thought that you all might enjoy seeing that, which of course we do. So we just thought it might be really nice. He suggested, in fact, that if you wanted to share photos of your own happy moments with Donald, you could send them before our next lecture on September 25th to this email on the screen, zoom at societyforcalligraphy.org. And then we can put them up on the website and possibly we can show a selection of them at the next lecture. That would be really fun to see how you've interacted with Donald all these years. So uh, also, I would like you to know that we have a website at the Society for Cal Calligraphy. So if you'd like to peruse our website to see what other exciting programs we have planned, uh, we please visit societyforcalligraphy.org. You can also watch previous programs on our YouTube channel, including Donald's first two lectures, the latest annual general meeting lecture with Nancy Ochita Howells, and the program about the early years of the SFC. We also list other events of interest to members. In programs, you'll find information about an upcoming Zoom event that I'm actually organizing for October 2nd. Um, uh, let's see, I'm just trying to put this in there and shift, or let's say I do return. So I've just put in um, the link to uh, that information. So the Zoom on October 2nd is going to showcase 25 five binders of a book that I've uh, made a facsimile of called La Prose du Transiberien. And that work will go on exhibit, the binders work will go on exhibit in London from October 4th to 25th at Mag Brothers. The exhibit's called Drop Dead Gorgeous. So if you wanted to see more about the exhibit, if you Google Drop Dead Gorgeous, you'll get a movie. So that's what you don't do. <laughs> what you would do would be to Google Drop Dead Gorgeous exhibit and then you'd find out more information about the exhibit. So for those of you that are interested in bookmaking of all kinds, this is a very wonderful program I'd like to introduce you to. So we're just about ready to begin our program with Donald. You may enter your questions for Donald in the chat room during his presentation. The chat function is down at the very bottom usually of your screen in the little bubble, and you click on that and type your question in. So he will answer selected questions from the audience at the end of his presentation. For me, if you would please type three question marks or the word question first to make it easier for me to gather questions during his talk to present to Donald at the end. So uh, I am very happy to see all of you here and uh, welcome you and Donald Jackson will now regale us with his many stories. Donald to you. Right. Uh, well, hello. Um, I'm just trying to clear my mind at the moment of all of the information and uh, interesting people I've just been talking to in the lead up to this um, so that I can 
remember what it is I hope to do. Um, and what I'm going to do before, I, well, I will now tell you what it is I'm hoping to do, which is um, to, first of all, I'm going to want you to know that I read and um, and was thankful for, for all of the comments and input that I had last week on the chat. At last time, I actually um, thought that the questions at the end were an interesting part to me, very interesting that things that were coming at me and my, um, I thought that was good. It went on rather long and I'm going to sort of insist that we stop. It's an hour and a half and it's starting uh, three minutes ago, three and a half minutes ago, um, because I just, uh, I just start to get uh, to lose it really at the end of that period of interrogation. But um, what I'm going to do is return at the, uh, when um, we've gone through the kind of theme of tomorrow, this evening um, or, or today is, um, is I'm going to return to one or two questions from last week. And I prepared a couple of responses, and um, and then then I'll open up to the questions that are coming in this evening. Or oh, I keep saying this evening. Forgive me. That's this evening. Real time. My real time is that. And I think now we're all beginning to realise and live in each other's real times, even though they're not the same as ours in um, in terms of the time of day. Uh, right. So. Um, but to start with, I'm going to try to concentrate your minds on what really is at the heart of much of what we do and why we do it. There has to be some reason why we do it. Um, and I would just like you to just take a look at um, a card, um, which was uh, sent to me by um uh, by moira collins in chicago and it's her favorite card and i guess it's going to be mine i mustn't do that so this is the slide number one please and then what do i click it don't i understand yeah okay i'm looking at writing all over it but um i'm presuming that you are seeing it without um can i get rid of that the black stripes and stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that was written by David Meckelberg. Um, I gonna say a long time ago. Uh, if you ever got a letter from David, you'd know what it means never to want to throw it away. Such a beautiful letter. And that's what it's about. He chose his quotations very carefully. And that, I hope, resonates with us all. It's that moment of sharing what you did and somebody receiving it. That, that's sort of a, very near to why we're all here together at the moment. OK. Um, Let's now go back to our traditional um, beginning to these talks. I'm trying to get to it. I can't get there. Somehow or other I can't get, ah, right. All right. Here we are uh, on a, an autumn evening when this photograph was taken some years back. This is where I am sitting now. Yeah. And with me is Carles Riva, who is the technical man. And I suppose he's, we're going to be able to see him or he's going to wave. And then over in the doorway here is as obscure and behind her mask as possible, uh, just to remind us of the situation that we're in at the moment, all of us. Um, and we've got the windows open and the doors open so that it's all well ventilated in here which worked to our, against us last week because my neighbour started to mow the lawn, which was a very loud mower at the same time as I was trying to get into this evening uh, presentation. Okay, um, 
Where we stopped last week was, um, I'm hoping um, what's happening. Um, I'm not touching it. All oh, right, okay. We're finding our way back to where we were. There. And um, I was writing with a repen. And I was trying to show how, on the one hand, it could be delicate and fine and free flowing and so on. And in the end, I smashed it right across. And that was how it resulted. And somebody commented and said, is that ruined? And I said, it sure is. But in fact, um, I was wrong because what I then did, if we can look at the camera on this, I'll show it to you. Uh, the next day, I suppose, as it dried out, I just picked up that smashed reed and did that with it without trimming it or touching it or messing about with it. And I'm going to just try it now uh, just to show you that even when it's almost a destruction, it was heavily wounded, but it managed to survive. Um, and so we'll start again with the other traditional side of this, which is, I will now hope to do, I tried to do a better A than uh, what that was, what was sort of, I think, behind me. I picked the thing up and thought, well, I would like to make a slightly better shot at that A after all this time. And here we have it. I've got the quill, uh, I've not the reed, look at it, it's a chewed up reed. It's taken from a ditch in Italy <laughs> many years ago. And I'm going to just try it now. I don't know. It just, there we go. It's, um, it's going to go, yeah. Still um, need a little more ink. So let me just try it. I'm going too big. Carl is Oh, that's a good splutch. And fine. And yet it can still. Actually, I've just realized I'm using different paper from the paper I used last time. And so um, this is, um, is, is, is not giving me the, um, this, this is a lesson in itself, really, that all I did was change the paper and then it stopped, it stopped um, taking the thing as well. Now this is actually just about working, but again, I make the point, you can make very fine, very, very fine marks. And in this particular case, you can make quite a big one. So that is a beginning of maybe I did, I made, I tried to do an A. I'm not getting enough ink on it, so I don't know why, but let's do it. Can you see that? I'm just going to come. I did an A. That noise means I've got traction. And they didn't know what that was going to turn out like, but who knows? You could make, I could find that as a characteristic of having something to begin with and play with and do the rest of it. And I will talk more about the tool and the quill because one of the questions was related to double writing and I couldn't remember quite how I'd done it. But this, this, this maltreated poor read is still capable of doing stuff and every now and again giving me the nice gift of a really spontaneous lot. So that is our traditional beginning uh, over with for the time being. And um, I'll now get started on what the rest of the images. And oh no, I, I want to say, um, that I haven't found it easy um, dealing with the Zoom. I haven't, oddly enough, but the only person who hasn't either learned Mandarin or French or how to master Zoom techniques during the COVID um, emergencies, the various ones that we've had over the last year and a half. Um, and I was struggling, really. I've been, uh, the last two episodes, to, in some respects, one of the things I got wrong was that I'd made masses of notes. Believe me, I have thought an awful lot about what I'd like to say to you. And some of it looked quite, you know, helpful. But then when it comes to doing it, 
uh, presenting it on this, I wasn't finding it working because I, I was sort of forgetting, I was having to put aside my relationship with you, which I do feel quite closely with this medium, because I was forever looking for the notes. And then that broke my sense of continuity and and I don't need much persuasion to sort of forget things. So um, that, that wasn't working very well. Um, but what I want to do is, well, I, I'm laying out sort of in a linear way, my kind of relationship between, I was asked to, to talk about the, um, the sort of, I suppose, the growth of, the societies in the US, the calligraphist groups and so on, and relate it to what I had said earlier, my learning uh, uh, in London and, and in the north of England um, as a student, and to sort of kind of use a linear, linear sort of, sort of as it were, travelogue almost. But in fact, um, like I want to, re I reminded you before, this is not a gallery show, uh, it's, and it's not really, about me, it's really about you looking at stuff that I've done and where I was and doing it and things that came up for me over those years. Um, um, it's about you thinking about yourself, what you bring to it. Um, I'm getting a little bit confused with my sentences here, but in other words, it's not me saying it's all about me. Look what I did. Da, da, da. In fact, it's amazing when I look through um, back. I mean, let's face it. It's a long time um, uh, of working in, in, in as a calligrapher and to be able to pick out certain things, you know, from all of that period of time and half my energies are going uh, editing myself from going off into all the many different tracks I could. Um, um, so I'm going to be showing you um, some historical kind of in sequence and, and whatever comes up for me um, and for you, what I think for you too, um, I will talk about it rather than um, consult notes as I go. So um, just to go back for a moment, um, I did in an earlier um, in the first episode, probably say um, that I, having sort of studied um, in a, in a, in a, in the UK, where at the, just at that point in time, uh, starting in uh, um, art school, when I was in nineteen fifties, um, there was. A sort of crisis occurring as far as calligraphy and lettering as an art or as a craft actually art was rather suspiciously uh, a suspicious um label to put to calligraphy because it was something that wasn't true to the arts and crafts tradition you should be doing things which were useful and beautiful but not not um aspiring to the to um the title of art, um, but it was a required subject in this for most of the students, beginning students in college, art college, um, in much the same way that life drawing uh, was a required subject if you are drawing uh, for all of us, um, in the sense that it was to teach you how to see and at the same time how to control and make marks and it was a discipline and it was just like learning scales and then you were supposed to then you know leave it um, and what it meant was in practical terms that throughout the uk um, where there was a fair sprinkling it made any major sized town um, of um, government or local authority art colleges and that meant that if this sort of calligraphy and lettering was seen as a practical and good uh, educational tool uh, for artists and also for producing occasionally people who who did it um, as an end in itself then you had to have a shooters and so there you could get a reasonably good grounding I know um, 
every uh, other people of, of my generation and even earlier um, will tell you uh, that they went to school and they could and and even when they graduated and went for for um, postgraduate studies at the Royal College of Art, which was the one that picked all the best students, um, uh, graduate students, um, and you, you were expected, certainly in the beginning of the of the 20th century, up till the 50s, you were expected to attend class in lettering. So there was there was an education there. Um, and from that plucked from that, um, uh, as it were, culture of um, you would get people who would gather and join in with the other um, uh, calligraphers who are interested in doing it. Um, and they would join in something called the Society of Scribes and Illuminators, which was formed in around 22, 1922. So there was a sort of um, chemistry of getting together and sharing like-minded people, often extremely well uh, educated in the graphic arts, particularly with calligraphy. And I'll just put it in perspective, and I won't go any further. It's not there is a smattering of art history in, in, in each of these talks, um, and that is that um, when Irene Wellington, for instance, who we talked about earlier, uh, was at the Royal College of Art. You would have 80 odd or so, I believe, as I remember it, students would gather to listen to a lectures by Edward Johnston, who was talking about quills and reeds and handmade writing and things of that kind. By the end of the term, that didn't matter if you were a painter, sculptor, whatever, stained glass artist, but by the end of the term, they're all gone. They'd, 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 they'd sort of crept away because it because it was a required subject and they were but however since they were graduate students they were beginning to feel that feel their own um shall we say independence they just didn't turn up and as irene wellington put it i was one of the fortunate few so he ended up john's with a, you know probably half a dozen or seven or eight even then it was always quite um a um you know uncommon for people to want to do this. So it's not, so that was the culture uh, that I grew from, where it was first of all taken for granted, it was a, something you taught. And I later on in life ran across people who'd been forced to do it um, and who had never forgotten how hateful they found it to be doing lettering and writing and, and drawn lettering um, in these circumstances. And, um, but the Society of Scribes and Illuminators was for us, as it were. Um, so I had felt how good it was to be able to go to a meeting um, as a guest to begin with, and then later as a, uh, as a member of it, as an elected member of it, having given in work, which I'd done after I left college, the idea was had become had become the bar had been raised somewhat. I mean, in the early days, it was people who were trained, but or those people who were really interested and had the right attitude, as it were. And um, by my time, it, you were not expected to come out of college, bring college work, which obviously had been mentored and so on. You and apply for for admission, you, you would be expected to develop something more of your own style. And some of those pieces of work I showed in the first two sessions, they were pieces I'd done after I left and applied for. Now, I just wanted to quickly tell one story, just to put it into perspective. Um, and there will be people here who know more and uh, Obviously, um, if Sheila Waters is, is watching, she will know more about this than I do. But the very first, well, hmm, let me think, do I want to go up this thing? Yes, well, obviously I did quite a lot of gilding on those early pieces, which I showed. And so 
uh, sure enough, I was asked to give, take part in a general evening's talk. In fact, I believe Sheila may well have been there. And I was asked to talk about gilding because here's this young guy, you know, and he seems to be splashing the stuff everywhere. Why not let him? So it was part of a group of specialist people talking. And when it came to me, I stood up and people were expecting me to talk about recipes of gilding and techniques and so on. And I, but I first of all said, and those of you who've seen the earlier talks will know that I wanted to do this, but I didn't have any means of financial support other than by doing it. So I stood up and said, I thought I should be honest and say that um, if I, I want to do this work, why do gold, gold and illumination, why do it? Um, and, I, and, and so why, how do I justify doing this? Um, and I said, so first of all, I, I have to say that I, ha I have to do it for a living. And that is as far as I got with my talk, the roof fell in on me in the form of the gentleman I'm guessing that Bruce Bishop um, mentioned earlier, who is called, um, darn it. Now, see, this is one of the things this time of night and my time of life, I can't remember names, Alfred Fairbank, who was a great, um, 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 shall we say, a correspondent of um of see this is interesting this how i sort of work when it comes to names my they're dropping out but anyway i'm i'm talking about um lloyd reynolds now see how bad my memory is when i can't think of him immediately but they were correspondents and they were very much into adverting to an earlier um discussion um before we got started um of it, italic handwriting in school. So they were passionate about that. Alfred Fairbank was the president at that time of the, universe, of the, of the um, Society of Scribes. And he said, how outrageous that somebody should discuss money when we're here to discuss calligraphy and this, that, and the other. That's absolutely not on to talk about how you sort of make us a living out of this how do you survive and then what happened is a couple of people jumped up and camp was a woman and she said what are you talking about and he said well you're just a woman <laughs> you, what would you know i mean this is how different things are and she of course went volcanic because she supported herself by teaching and doing lettering of all kinds and other people in the room were but the expectation was that this was pure and unsullied by any commercial considerations. And I can see that because at the heart of it, we're doing it for its own sake. And I think I went to some lengths last time to point out that I was doing what I wanted to do for its own sake only when I got the chance and that wasn't very often but in the meantime i put what i wanted that i felt into wherever possible and anything i was being paid for that seems fairly elementary now but it was very different then and that was a different atmosphere but i did learn over the years how wonderful it was to have the fellowship of other people that you could talk to uh, and be with and look at their work and listen to their views and so there was a great benefit to gathering together as a society. Right, I'm now going to get back to the slides. Because in a way, um, a lot of um, um, uh, I click and I go to something else, I hope next, what happens? Why am I not getting that? Ah, there we are. That's, it's not the right one, so I click on the left, right one. How do I, I do this? I can, how do I get to the previous one? Yeah, it's not working. So there we go. And so eventually I sort of, uh, this 
evening is sort of talking about an apprenticeship of leading in the direction of my travels to the US and eventually ending up with the beginnings of how the St. John's Bible came about. And I'm seeing a row of people on the right hand side, um, which um, I probably don't need to see, do I? Uh, I do, I do. I have to see it. Okay, so it means I can't see all of the image I'm talking about. So um, um, here's a picture of me back in the UK. And at the point in time when I was uh, um, probably chairman of the SSI, probably 1970, and I'm talking about a very powerful piece, a hanging by Anne Heckel. So I was involved in that, I was involved in that society actively and also in, uh, as it were, receiving and giving in it. So um, then um, I've given you the, I've given you the talk about all of that. And um, so let me just now go to the next one. What is happening? Twice then, okay, do that. And that finds me painting on the wall in the, what was called a calligraphy workshop in 80 Fifth Avenue, which was formed by Louis Strick, who was interested in um, the whole subject of calligraphy and thereby also in the business of um, putting together um, art material supplies um, and specialized uh, groupings of them and also publishing. Now, well, I mean, I've just forgotten how I got to this point, but let's go back in time quickly to the fact that I borrowed the fair in, in 1968, went off to the US um, to try to sell work. I got a portfolio, it took me a year to develop a portfolio of work to take to sell. But in almost no time, I met a wonderful group of graphic artists and people who are interested in calligraphy, but I mean, obviously, people like Alice, who is a, a sort of byword for calligraphy and, and working in print, and others, graphic designers, and um, all of whom were so welcoming and who met themselves in something called the Gallery 303 in, in, in New York. And I think it was 64th Street or something, um, and, and 6th and 7th or in that sort of area. And they got together like minds and shared, you know, talk speakers, different speakers and so on, Hermann Zapp from, uh, from uh, Germany, and mostly to do with type, but nevertheless, all with an interest in letters. Now, why am I saying this? Um, because from that, I did sell uh, a lot of what I brought. I mean, it wasn't a massive amount, but I thought, ah, the streets are paved with gold in, in New York, and this is going to be the way to go. But then I, before long, and I had, of course, the client, Guillermo Rodriguez, who was uh, from, uh, a Puerto Rican a businessman and banker who had had private lessons with me in the UK and commissioned me to do something on the strength of one of that that one of the pieces of work that I put in for the for this for the Society of Scribes uh, entry, and he persuaded me to come back and organise the finance and the first two week workshop I gave in your part of the hemisphere. I'm not very good on geography, obviously was in Puerto Rico. It wasn't in the big city. It was in, in Puerto Rico, in San Juan, and in the, in the Institute of Graphic Arts. And I taught students who, of all kinds, um, coming in from the countryside as well as the city, calligraphy for two weeks. And obviously, when I got home in the evening, Guillermo Rodriguez uh, expected me to give him another whole lot of lessons, um, which, of course, did, and our lifetime friendship started in from there. Now, what I'm saying is, I was learning the ropes, really, I started gave a couple of talks in Pratt uh, Institute, did a, a talk at um, the New School, these are in New York, okay. So we are talking 
68, 69, may come back to Puerto Rico, 70, something like this. This is the linear bit. And uh, right, I, I'm just now going to change the slide from me. Um, uh, no, and I clicked it twice that time and, and it didn't work. So that's it. All right, okay. No, that's it. Scratch it. Off. So I'm, I'm, I'm sort of bogged down a bit here, so I'm going to move on. So what happened is that um, my, uh, this shows you, and I've talked about this before, how weird small things affect in a big way. One, my daughter uh, was being brought back from school in with well, the neighbor's kids and uh, the neighbor driver, we were doing uh, car share or whatever you'd call it. And um, he got frustrated with the kids, turned around and, and actually gave one of them a slip, smack around the ear. And two things. One, the kid that got the ear smack was my daughter. And the first thing was that he was a teacher at the school. So in the conversation that followed, uh, when we had a little discussion, um, it turned out that he had just returned from the US where he taught a summer workshop. He'd been on a, a, ex a year's exchange in California, and guess where? He'd been teaching during the summer. He'd been teaching at UC Santa Cruz. And the conversation led to this is they said, you know, and I said, well, I'd been doing some teaching. He said, well, this is the person to get in touch with. So because my, my daughter got a smack around the ear, I actually got the in connection with, um, with UC Santa Cruz and wrote to them. And they said, why not? And they advertised it. So that workshop, which I had talked about earlier with the um, uh, SFC um, um, interactions, um, was a sort of mini conference. It came, people came from all corners of the US and Canada um, to, to it. It wasn't as I, because of me, they didn't know me or what I was, but they were interested in calligraphy. So it was already there. What then happened is uh, I came back and um, uh, again, um, and gave scribes workshop in, um, Again, another one in Santa Cruz and in LA, and um, it sort of started to grow. And um, why did it grow? Because in each of the places I was, there would always be somebody who had already been teaching, uh, whether it was in the Y or whether it was in uh, in, in college. Um, and so um, there was a sort of already a, a sort of um, interest and enthusiasm building up in the different communities. I, I can't name them all and I won't begin to even think of it. So we, we, but they were there. So it wasn't me sort of going out into the wilderness. It wasn't a wilderness. It was, it was already had people there, but then there was a specialist coming from Europe to go to it. So that grew from there. That um, then meant, um, um, but remember, I'm somebody who knew what it was like to be in a group and a, a varied interests and, and generation. And so um, I, I actually, we should be looking at me when I was doing this, but it doesn't matter, I've forgotten. Um, and so what came about was a series of things like that. Well, the, 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 this, can, can I just have a, well, I don't know, I, I'm actually conscious that you're sitting looking at something. Can I, could you look at me in, in step, please? Thank you. Um, and so what was happening, was that um, people were coming and then they went back again to their different places. And of course, I thought, well, this is when coming to LA, I'd said, why don't you just join together as a group? And we'd worked in Santa Cruz as a group over large, far too big a class for the kind of teaching I'd ever had or given. And so I realized the value of, of, um, of breaking people up into groups and working small, smaller numbers so that people start helping each other rather than just always looking at the teacher. They're looking at each other and that is great. And that power empowerment of the student and, um, and you just, the, the teacher orchestrates 
comes up with problems for you to answer and then tries to help you when you get into trouble. That's basically it. Um, and so, sure enough, the LA Society started uh, uh, at, at that suggestion. And uh, then it was followed uh, around the US, um, um, f first there, it was in New York, um, after that group um, um, with uh, where I was painting on the wall, and then of, later than that, San Francisco, and people were then helping each other. And um, it was, um, uh, became a possibility to invite people from different parts, different parts of the world, from, from Europe, and, and also people who were professionals already in the, in the locality, um, both as teachers and as um, um, thing. But anyway, so I, I both stepped into something and also at the same time, so happens, was, became a focus. You know, so these different things happened. And so while I was working you know, in England, I would come over um, in the summer and teach extension courses and things of that kind. And, and before long, I mean, the Society of Scribes and Illuminators had a thousand members, um, most, many of whom, the new ones, were coming from the US, because at that time there were only fledgling groups and classes. Here we have right dead center, um, a certain Ms. Nancy Uchida, and also another um, of the, of, um, well, a number of people, I'm sure you'll know, I said I wouldn't give names, one of them is behind the squares, it's behind the blocked out on my screen. But there we are, classes, and then eventually I was asked to come and teach at, at, uh, UC, at um, Cal State LA and given a year to teach. And this, these was some, there's not exactly all of them, but many of them there, Thomas Singmeyer there, and obviously Kat Okamoto there, and, and Nancy again, and so on. And just pay attention to this guy, um, Carl uh, Anderson, because I'll refer to him in a minute. The other people you may actually recognize, some of them, if you're local. Um, and again, many friends for life. But um, the um, um, Carl Anderson did these, he used to do these drawings of us. And um, this is me, um, obviously sitting, um, gosh, this guy from England, da, 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 Paddy the Beaver, oh, my favorite. And the Paddy the Beaver goes back to Santa Cruz when the students after a three week course I, and I had so much to learn about the US and the pe and the fact that to have to commit to a three week workshop was colossal when most people's annual vacation was only two weeks, uh, which is different in the UK and, and in Europe, actually, generally. But um, all those things I was learning. So I was picking up learning the language, learning some of your culture. And what happened this Paddy the Beaver, I will mention it because this means I had to respond to a to an emergency in Santa Cruz because all of these really high powered people, very many of them, you know, one guy in New York who had employed 30 calligraphers in a scroll shop, um, of which he had a reputation going back almost 100 years. Um, people were getting very anxious towards the end of the second week or maybe middle of the time. What are we? You know, we haven't got anything to show for it. Whereas, in fact, I was pushing them slowly towards learning to sit on, you know, to learn it in the way I wanted to, which would be most useful to them. In other words, absorb it first, and you don't have a product necessarily. So at one point, things are so tense. I picked up a children's book, um, which was traditional stories from New England. Um, by Thornton W. Burgess, and they, he, he, Paddy the Beaver was one of his characters, and it was a, a children's story, very sweet, and I read it to them. And things calmed down. I read it just at the beginning of the day, so before we start, let's have Paddy the Beaver. And the next day I went in, the place is silent. I mean, some people have been working all night, and there are people are sitting there like this, uh, and I 
I thought, why are you work why aren't you working? And they said, Oh, aren't we going to get another episode of Paddy the Beaver? And these people from all over the place were waiting for a little story to get them going. A marvellous lesson to me, not to be riding it too hard. On the other hand, apparently I could be strict, but I didn't realise it. And this is me issuing, um, you know, uh, assignments. And apparently um, I was not um, being prepared to dilly-dally over it. But I think I personally wasted a lot of time there. Um, I could have made much more effective use of myself as a professor for those students. But anyway, at the end of the time, there they had it. And we had some good times. And what I wanted to do then is, I, I'm, um, um, I've got to move on. Uh, this is Jo White. Jo White from uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis. And she had bearded me, as the old fashioned expression is, in that workshop in New York and said, she came and said, I want you to teach in the Twin Cities. And I said, well, and I, the moment I get a chance, I will. And after the um, workshop in, and having me learn quite a lot from my students about how not to do things and how to do things, um, I actually, on the way back to home to England after a year with, in, in San Francisco, in, in, Los, in Los Angeles, in, I meant to say, California, um, I, um, I came to the Twin Cities and she had a group there of um, Dynamo people. And um, uh, she said, when are you coming back? And I said, I actually have had enough teaching. I, I, um, I, I, the workshops I was going to and giving lots of information I was realizing was not the, quite the right way to do it because I wasn't there the next week or the week after. I wasn't there the next day often, even when people um, were in trouble, struggling. Um, so I said, I, I'm not sure. And she said, I said, but I, I must say I did enjoy this workshop in Los Angeles where it was an evening lecture series and as many people that, that wanted could come and and the students in my class in the in the day were facilitators and we got this great atmosphere going and and it was a 10-week program and at the end of it we had more students than we started with and we started with 80 something so the facilitators and we all worked together and so i said now that was good now, what if we could do something like that? That might be interesting and left it there. And that was over gin and tonic and uh, a couple of years. And I went back to England, started evolved in uh, doing this, this series of film series for, you know, it was a commercial venture. And um, then uh, which came out into being a book, which some of you might recognize, although this was one of the foreign language editions and um, and that was a whole other strand of my life back in the UK. And I wasn't going back and forth. People thought I was, but I was actually not. Um, every now and again, I would come, but not not doing regular workshops, and uh, to my recollection. And um, but Joe White hadn't forgotten that conversation. Um, but this was spreading the word with the talk so spreading the word um it was going on with the with the books and things of that kind it wasn't again a planned thing it wasn't a um, um it was just something that seemed interesting to do and um joe white came up with the phone call uh, in the middle of the night two o'clock in the morning a story i've often told and she said we'd been talking about a hundred people and she or two and she said how about 500 and she kick-started this whole thing um, of which actually in a way started way back but from this sense of being together it was called a calligraphy connection and that's what it was at its heart it was connecting all of us together and this was in a quite a dramatic way and um and we just didn't know what we were doing in the main 
but it was just wonderful. The energy that was there. I don't think anybody who was there would ever forget it. And so it was. Um, we went through five or six alphabets in the morning, traditional um, historical alphabets. How to how to pull them to pieces, put them together again. And half of the rest of the morning, we were illuminating a letter. And um, you could have heard a pin drop in that place at certain times. Um, and then it went on and became the, the, the series of, of, of um, um, conferences that we all know about, probably, you, you know, that were involved in looking at this. And it went on and still is. And, you know, that's a huge, a huge cause for congratulation for everybody that was involved in all of these things, because all of these scattered around the US, people took on the task of pulling all this together and often based on a willing group of volunteers in a society that had formed to go to join together to share their love and interest and so there was that carrying the whole thing through the energy of that was being carried through now um what was i wanting to say about that well the, the, you know this is the sort of thing i imagine that i was being asked to talk about but i i'm go off the subject quite a bit but so what i'm really saying is it is it's big in in a small way it's big <laughs> because calligraphy is is the yeast it's the it's the germ in the graphic art in the in the lettering and arts in in advertising and all the times people need lettering unique they slanted towards a particular fo um, purpose whether it to to look like it's very friendly down home and wobbly and nice and cuddly or harsh and on a movie um, title. Um, it's all when people come to create something for that, whether it's on a computer or if it's by hand on a vellum uh, sheet, it, um, the core is the same. It, the, the, the yeast of it is in our handmade marks i would argue that i mean the alphabet grew from the hands of many people in many cultures over the millennia um and there is a dna in every single one of them however distorted by the computer there's a dna which leads back to somebody doing something by hand and if nothing else somebody who studied calligraphy has is in tune with that emotional link that a letter form makes uh, it and can be a good person to do the most modern thing you can think of in, in lettering as well as the most traditional that would be my argument however um so these things went on and, and still are going on um as best we can and um and i would occasionally go to them and I, I obviously this was probably, I think, 84, when I was teamed up with um, Kaz Tanahashi in, uh, in, from San Francisco, who was, shared a sort of morning session, me doing Western and he doing Eastern calligraphy, a very interesting experience for us all. And people all together, and this is like the, the teachers, all sitting next to the students, all learning, which is not easy. And me, we all were supposed to do something a bit crazy and appear in fancy dress, which was, of course, not as one would think of serious. Um, but in fact, we all were there to have a good time together as well. And so, you know, teaching how it there's me in a punk outfit, uh, a few minutes before I'd been in a monk's outfit and I was trying to make the point that a letter R or an I or an S um, have the same essence, even though the clothing um, gives off a different personality. And, you know, friendships are made by everybody. And um, here's one where um, uh, uh, we have a letter from Alice sent to me 30 years after that occasion where we all had fancy dress this is mabel my wife 
my, you know, know who that is. Alice sent the photo. She had persuaded the letter I wrote to her. This is she sent the original letter saying, or a copy of it, that I had persuaded her to come and teach at the convent at the um, connection. So we were all getting together, and so this is her letter to me on the back. But I mean, so we it was all about having a good time and fellowship and making friends and which we used. Now back to the UK. I then occasionally showed up at um, um, conferences for, for whatever and I mean but not not by any means you know um, teaching um, probably giving a talk or various other things but um, what I didn't say was earlier that with the story of writing book and films um, that ended up being a real long trip around Europe and Canada, around uh, US and Canada. And um, it, um, it meant I went on book tours and talked a lot and did give many um, um, workshops alongside the sort of promotion of the book, which is, you know, what you do when publishers publishing a book for you. And so there was a lot of spread with that. So that was where you know, one of the book, the book that was shown earlier that um, one of our um, our friends tonight have looked at and Michael Gullick, who helped me with the picture research on that book and on the films, has said um, he he had a copy of a complimentary copy of the book and, he, and uh, somebody said, do you want Donald to sign it? And he said, no, he said, um, I want this. I want this to remain a rare copy that hasn't been signed. So I'd signed so many everywhere, and I found out how the right side of the brain and left side of the brain are different because you try holding a conversation while you're doing calligraphy. It's you. Most of you have had to do it at some point, but the two things start going in different directions, and you end up not being able to spell your own name. I've signed a book. I got my name wrong. And then being asked by the person if she could have a replacement book. Um, and I said, no, if you want me to sign it, you take the risk. But that's it. The left and the right, you try doing it, it's very easy. This, back in Wales, there was a working studio. Brody Nguyenschwander there um, um, was for a year my sort of uh, apprentice. I think I learned far more from him than he did from me. But this is me preparing yet another for yet another of Joe White's initiatives, a um, um, what is the word? Um, uh, retrospective uh, of work I've done over the years. Well, you know, it wasn't easy to find work because as you know, I sell I sell it as I go along. And I wasn't doing it for its own sake. I was in the sense of like a painter working. Um, I was doing it for purposes and of kinds. So there was a frenzied amount of work went on um, leading up to the opening of the Painting with Words exhibitions, which again was another thing that I'm going to make a point at the end of this. A lot of media, a lot of media from the very word go, for, you know, the Today shows, the, uh, the, the Good Morning America's, the, the New York Times, the all of all of these things and so i was learning a lot i was learning a lot about being on on tv being talking to journalists and really finding out and getting very used to the idea that all you're doing is helping them fill column inches or a cute bit on the tv and so on and it, it you know and i got very good at it um and and but so good at it, actually, in some respect, that I really got to dislike myself. Um, but it's a point to make this because there's an awful lot of that publicity that that, that show that through Joe White's and her and her friends um, helped, and with the help of societies around the US and in you know Scandinavia and eventually China and so on. That show went all around those places because there were people there who had already got together, who could give it support, could 
could um, push for um, a good venues and that sort of thing. So it, it wasn't me, it was a load of people. And um, that also meant that because we've got numbers, you can then be a worthwhile market for publishers. So people will actually commission a book on how to do handwriting or how to do this or reprint um, classic books from the from Europe and also who places that artists who otherwise would probably have to do other jobs could teach um, what they did best to students who really that's the best kind of teacher to have is somebody who does it uh, rather than somebody you know who talks about it uh, which is what I'm doing now um, and that exhibit gave me permission to play partly because that that piece on the right is a part of something which was some probably six foot or more tall so I was able to and that was because I needed to fill up space um, and also uh, that's an informal piece you do things like that in your daily life and then a book filling it with with free lettering and playing painting with your fingers that all of that bird is done with just dipping my finger into the ink and painting with my nails and taking chances and and also putting stuff in books what, I, what i'm building up to is you talk i have done a lot of this a lot of it and you know i have to ask myself why and i have to explain myself really and and support from others now I think I'm, I'm guessing, but I'm guessing that could well be Bruce Bishop. But I, he um, did a lot of very nice classy work um, for the in support of the LA um, group. But also a lot of these societies, I say a lot of the societies, some of them, and to this day, do some very classy um, uh, journals and um, um, uh, with thoughtful thoughtful um, um, articles and brilliant um, reproductions and edited well and those all have grown and are doing their own work for themselves and just so interesting and and so worthy of congratulation and there we come into the end of this talking of mine um, about things um, almost at the end um and this one is you know so i would pop up and give a talk here and there and in relation to a conference or so on there was a conference in 96 in the twin cities which was quite interesting in itself and probably another whole episode where you the home truths came out about where calligraphy stood um where you have book collectors and dealers and um, antiquarians coming to this conference, invited by a special invitation, the, uh, the senior director of Sotheby's, who happens to be the most wonderful guy who loves calligraphy genuinely in his heart and books, and, um, uh, uh, and uh, Christopher de Hamel, who's now writing nice books about people who make books or did make books and in his retirement and um, he said to me after the conference he said this you've got the wrong people here you don't you should not have had book dealers and people like that because really they're more interested in they can sell a book for a million dollars that was probably uh, a you know run-of-the-mill mass-produced illuminated book done in the in the um in holland or the low countries you know in the 1430s and it's got loads of pictures in it lots of gold it's not very well done it's not a high quality of thing but people will pay a million for that if you do it as a calligrapher it the amount of money you can get for it is so little it wouldn't ever interest a dealer there's nothing there's no money in it so we we are that's another thing that came out of that but i mean I'm, i wouldn't go off into that i'm afraid for a moment but in 95 
um, St. John's were toying with the idea, St. John's University, where we'd done the conferences, but they'd seen the enthusiasm, they'd seen the quality of the students who came from all around the world. And they thought, well, maybe we could have a book art center here. Maybe we could put here, have a master's or something, something we could put a title to it where people could get, you know, student loans or all of the paraphernalia of, and you know, pragmatic stuff that goes with learning, it seems to me these days, um, and get some money together and we could have it as an international center for the book arts in, up in Minnesota. Um, and um, so one of the tentative things was that we would put on this show in 1996 called Survey Textus. I was asked to go and talk to my friends in Chicago and give a talk. And along would come somebody from St. John's and, you know, get in, get the feel of things. And there was this nice exhibition. And I came along for that. And the date was uh, whatever it is. It was, it was the fall of 95. And in, in um, Chicago was when I popped the question. Um, let's go back, if I can, oh no, go back, 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 one. I popped the question um, to the priest who had come to observe the likes of the Chicago calligraphers and judging, trying to see which way this was all going. We were raising, he was, they were trying to get people to come to the, to the symposium. And uh, he didn't know, but I was setting him up for a question that Joe White and I had been discussing, which was, how would you like me to write the Bible for you as a, to commemorate the millennium? So that's when the question was first asked. It was coming to Chicago, one of that large group of friends of people and the seed was then sown for that. Now, throughout all of this, one of the things I keep on talking about is play. It's fooling around when with nothing to do but other than do. And here's a little book. I don't know what that was. That must be a present to my son. Uh, and you know, this was a little alphabet book, and I just had a little ready-made, beautifully made little book, folding book, and just fiddled and fooled around with it. This is what uh, this is what we can do with our calligraphy. We can discover things, and we can discover things in ourselves. But it's also we can do things, and we can play. We can send a sympathetic note that wasn't ever sent. That was just sent by online. And um, uh, let me just check. I'm trying to check out what comes next here because I don't want to get ahead of myself. And here's another, this is a birthday card a couple of weeks ago to my son, who's far too old. Um, I, I, nobody should actually have to have children that old, but I seem to have them. And um, so we can do this uh, with, with our letters and our lettering. And a sense of play, Another word for it is that it gives you permission to be spontaneous. You know what being spontaneous is a nice feeling. So play teaches you to feel good about taking a chance. And when the most horrible things happen, somehow or other, being spontaneous and grabbing that moment came from play indirectly and it can be the right thing to do at that moment and um no this is not what i was have i gone what is going to go back i miss one i gotta go back a bit sorry guys uh, can i go back a couple there we are and this is something i did on the day that mabel came running across from the house to the studio where I'm sitting now, where we had the Bible calligraphers with us, perhaps not all of them, certainly Sarah and Sally May 
and she said, you've got to come and look at what's happening on television. And that was the morning 20 years ago, a couple of weeks back or a week before last, when the planes went into the Twin Towers. And I'd been working on trying to make sense of the multiply faceted ask from the client when working on the Bible. And it was several parables, um, uh, all really about love so great that it will forgive even the daftest things. And somehow or other, I just find myself doing that because I felt so angry, like so many other people, that this had happened. And I realized the only way out of it was to love your way out of that anger and hate, return to hate. And somehow or other, this, I was able, and I swear it comes from just that attitude of play, which meant I could just respond and put those twin tires in gold to say, we are loved, we must love. And that's where I end the talk about the journeys around uh, and back and forth beyond um, saying that returning to the fact that it, it wasn't um, what was I wanted to return to? Yes, it's a cautionary tale, really, is it, it's pretty probably accurate to say you couldn't have had anybody who put himself out there more than I did in terms of loads of publicity, loads of you know, public things, you know, that happened, um, exposing myself to the multiple times to the fear of making a complete idiot of myself, and indeed making an idiot of myself, uh, and also not getting things right by any means, by people hurting people as well as pleasing people. And, you know, it doesn't get um, it doesn't, in itself, that is of no good at all, um, is being, a, unless what happened was that as it started was I realized people wanted to learn and willy-nilly, no big plan, being the person I was who felt I had something to prove, I don't know what, but it meant that event that people took up on the, 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 the challenge, I ended up, I wasn't selling, I wasn't selling, I mean, I was selling books, I was signing books, and that was inadvertently selling books, I wasn't on a royalty, and um, I wasn't actually selling my work, but I was selling calligraphy as it turned out, to people who wanted to know about it and who and were ready for it and, uh, and were already interested in it. And that happened. But it, the, the, the actual mechanisms of it, over and again, I was proved, you know, it was shown to me how the media thinks of people who are on it um, as just, you know, the talent and uh, the real thing that matters is um, what they're doing, not what you're doing. Um, and so there are lots of interesting stories along those lines, but I will now begin to start talking about questions. Um, and my first thing will be um, talking about a couple of questions that came in last week. And I will really quick, um, and I don't know what I need to see the slide now, I think. Um, let me find my little recording here. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, number one. Um, 
I don't know how that happened, but can I go back one, please? Um, there we have, you've been talking about how do you teach kids? Now, here you have grandfather and grandchild, grandfather teaching, trying to get the grandchild interested in calligraphy and writing. So I did say last week, I have completely failed. I mean, now, all right, she was interested in that. And you know what? She is good. But I didn't know at the time she was having trouble with her eyes. She now wears glasses. But this is her now. You tried teaching, <laughs> you tried teaching a 16-year-old anything at all. I mean, I and this is this is me, and I'm saying, well, you know, I could help you with this handwriting or whatever. And she immediately and then I think her eyes are glazing over. The next thing is I realize she's looking at her screen under the desk that I'm trying to demonstrate really how to do some handwriting or options and, you know, trying to make it interesting. And she's looking at, guess what? How to do calligraphy on the screen that she's looking at. So it, that is authority, that you, you get the authority from that, you don't get it from the person who's spent his life doing it. So, you know, just to put it into perspective, we, you do have a problem getting kids involved, but the, the, it's there, it's there. And it, it, you know how you get it out? It's getting a good young person or a good old person or a person who loves doing it, doing it. As, as we heard earlier, people who, who go out there and get them into it, they are. They don't know what they know. They don't know until they know. And once they start doing it, it taps into something inside. You know, it's, those, it's that DNA. Other question was, somebody said, um, do you all have to do all of these periods is the same? We were talking about royal charters and I didn't, I think, answer it properly. And the answer is no. The only brief is that they've got to look royal. They have to look, they have to speak of tradition because they're pretty weighty royal uh, legal documents. Um, I've just noticed who, who this was for, which is the, the um, husband of Margaret Thatcher, a former prime minister. And um, so it was to do, you concentrate everything on the E for the main, but you can do anything else. This was something different because somebody said, I noticed there were differences and it was actually, it's up to you providing it answers the brief of basically concentrating on the main word, which is Elizabeth the second, in other words, on the royal thing. And, um, and so again, and they varied. So I have quite a lot of freedom um, within that brief. So that's that question answered. That's a quick one. And um, uh, then um, somebody else also asked, what, and I think it was an interesting question, what, what have you kept? What have you not sold, in other words, uh, in, in and around your, you know, personally? And so um, I just thought, right, I'll walk around the house this is, um, uh, you know, uh, obviously a picture of me in, in just took a picture to show this piece of work, this badly, but it's, um, I was in, I was in Australia in 84, f fell in love with the place, fell in love with the, the, the yellowness and the sunshine and this Australian poet, um, uh, she wrote this about the wattle tree, which is, um, what's the proper name for the wattle, wattle tree anyway? The mimosa, mimosa is another word for it. Um, the tree knows four truths, earth, water, oh, the earth or three truths, is it? Yeah, I can't, four truths, oh, I must, oh, I must have missed one. I, I can't read it from here, to be honest. Um, uh, but, and the heat of the sun. But so the point is that the gold on there, um, there's quite a lot of finger painting in the whole of it. And the gold on there is all the gesso is put on by, by fingers, um, dipped into the gesso, white lead and all, and moved on. This is uh, the Trinity you've seen, which is one of the key pieces that I showed to get into the Society of Scribes and Illuminators and to hope people would want to ask me to do it more of it. 
Um, and this is propped up against the wall there. And this little piece here is something I like, and it's something I did um, as a keepsake um, for, um, and it's gold foil stamped uh, by the same printers as printed the, the, the facsimiles of the St. John's Bible, the heritage editions. And Sarah um, took some pieces of color from one of the pages and gave the background to it. And I really like it. I, I live with it and I quite like the lettering on it. Can't see it very well from here, but that's um, probably because I had got these glasses on. Thank you. And there's another corner, which I coincident, which is on my left, actually, on the wall right to the side of me, which um, behind it is some gilding I did as when doing an art in residency, artist in residency, for a week at um, one of the conferences in California in Santa Clara. Um, and that just happens to be there. But um, so you ask me what's around um, my uh, um, uh, home. And here is uh, a piece that I did for that show in 88. And um, this is another, these are some things where I printed off, you know, the text by uh, um, uh, silk screen and then just played above. Um, and this is another one. And um, and this is just me just taking a picture of what's on the wall. And I quite enjoy this. I managed to live with those, um, which is interesting to me. But um, one of the things that's sensible, what is it? The wording is, um, and I'm trying to sort of think, I think I've got it written down here because I can't, um, it chopped off some of it on the screen there. And uh, of course, typically I can't find it, but um, it's, um, is it here? No. no, never mind. We have the hunt. I ah, well done, Sarah. We found the, we found the, the piece here. And I'm just doing a, 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 a quick thing from it, which says, he, this is written by a guy called, um, uh, uh, he wrote, Desmond Morris, and he was a he was an anthropologist, and he wrote writing a formalized offshoot of picture making can be a vehicle for aesthetic of exploration on an enormous scale. Uh, by exploration, for exploration's sake, step by step, we develop our subtle and complex and awareness of the world around us as our talents allow. And the important thing is what we acquire in this way, this exploration can then be applied anywhere, anytime in any context, which could be a good quote in full for your approaches to any education person um, when you're talking about introducing calligraphy to kids, it's what we do. We are playing with letters and moving them around, putting them together again. We are behaving like we are evolutionary creatures. We're not stuck. We are moving in our small bubble, but we're moving forwards, outwards and also forwards, inwards. Right. Uh, I think now um, we, um, we, 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 we come to the to the questions, such time as I have left. I don't know that uh, is moving. We don't have an awful lot of time left. But um, perhaps uh, uh, I will I just have a tailpiece of the questions and I'll keep them. I don't, I don't want them to go on forever because actually sitting and paying, trying to um, work out what I'm saying. I mean, I did look at, um, it was not a very happy experience looking at the recordings of. Uh, the talks so that I would try to get better at it. But I do realize that with our sort of homegrown um, um, Zoom technology, and we're not very uh, high up on the um, um, fiber broadband or whatever it is, that the best, best results are where we are right in the countryside. Um, it was quite tiring. So I am, I'm mindful of whoever's uh, watching that this is obviously getting tiring for you as well as me. Now, um, so if I can go back to Kitty, please. 
um i would um you know if you've got some questions for me sure. i will see what i can do okay i do um i have quite a few questions you won't be able to get to all of them but uh, some are a little bit open-ended but i think i'll suggest something that you can do to make it more precise so the first question people love when you tell stories would you please this is from ellen mott jablonski would you please tell us your experience as a student in Suzanne Moore's class at the Seattle Letters Conference? Well, first of all, I, I remember I remember her very well, and her husband took a, a very nice film of the presentation that I did at that conference. Um, the that was, it's a good question um, because I have been a. I have been at uh, just about this many classes since I graduated um, from uh, college in 1961. And one of them was Thomas Ingmeyer in uh, Hoboken, I remember. Uh, another um, was um, sign painting at, at one of the conferences. Um, I went to an icon painting class about three years ago with um, uh, Aidan Hart, who contributed such nice things to the St. John's Bible um, project. Uh, and I'm missing out a couple or so. And I I find her surprisingly hard to get my head around new tricks or new ways of doing things. And, um, and I'm really, believe me, on the teacher side, um, always. And uh, I know Thomas at one point was a bit leery of me being in his class um, and uh, wondering if, you know, I might start trying to, to start being a teacher. But in fact, I, I wasn't. Um, I was really very impressed by the quality of his ideas and what he was asked and the way he asked us to do it, um, which was brilliant, well, doing calligraphy to music in those days. And um, so back to Suzanne. Um, I won't say it was humbling, because believe it or not, um, when it comes to work, I am quite humble, but um in myself i'm really hard on myself and that's another thing one could should learn is to try to be more forgiving to oneself as well as to others um and i haven't learned that lesson yet but you know i do press it on you to try and see if you can um well first of all that was a high charge class the students were all you know they were good and also they were um had been working in the medium. They'd been working in the kind of mediums of um, uh, treating papers, getting uh, good effects and usable, useful imagery uh, and backgrounds, and also organizing um, their lettering. And some were brush lettering, some was everything else. We could do anything I think we wanted to. I just felt myself being behind all the time. I felt I was slow, uh, you know, I didn't feel uh, rather hampered um, uh, not being able to master some of these techniques and i found that the same in aiden hart's class where you're working with um um uh, what i'm trying to say is egg yolk and and so on it with um uh, this is the this is the bit about me not remembering things but a completely different technique you have to work very fast which i can do but in with um going layer on top of layer and not disturbing the layer underneath and all that, you would think I would be relatively skilled at that. The other thing too is I found that my eyes are not as good. Um, I'm very fortunate. I mean, I can see uh, with eye glasses around me and I can also read without them, but you know, I use them to take strain away, but uh, you do need good glasses. And my first presentation was ended with saying, get make sure you got optimum help you know because when the scribes started here the, the, the five uh, or four guest scribes 
who were working on the Bible, and, uh, plus um, Sally May, who was the studio manager then, the first thing they do was to, was get new glasses because they were it was so demanding. One of them, however, took on the job of exercising her eyes and going through a series of, you know, building up the muscles and so on. She didn't. She got rid of the specs, the glasses. We call them spectacles in England, as you probably know. But they, they, um, uh, and even in Wales, <clears throat> and um, the. Um, you know it we do demand a lot of ourselves we do need to see as well as we can and i find that difficult um i sort of blanked i also thought the sheer volume of newness new information was hard for me to capture and i could and older i really get sort of react rather i suppose to people using um their phones all the time to um record things rather than seemingly be there you know, present, more present, but rather more, I'll see, I'll check in on what it was like when I get back home. But I do see the point, because, you know, when you get quite a lot of information coming at you, at certain, you, you, you can't always absorb it all at the same time. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm not, it was a good question, but not a terribly good answer. But I must say, um, I, I, I learned how difficult it was to be a student. And when you ask people to try new things, um, uh, however comfortable they are with themselves, um, you know, it's, it, you've got my full sympathies. Uh, next question, please. Thank you, Donald. So um, in this next question, I think it'll be useful if you could go back to the pictures that you just uh, showed um, around your house that you've kept. And here's your question and why I'd like you to go back and pick one picture so you might be able to answer this question because it's kind of open ended. But if you have a specific thing to look at, it might be helpful. So this is from Janet Martorello. Can you share your process from your thought and inspiration to creating a final piece? So I was thinking if you could pick one of your pieces, you could talk about maybe how you were inspired to start that piece and how you got to the end. You know, it may be different. No, 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 no sorry. It, um, thanks a lot, Janet. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, You're welcome, Donald. Uh, yeah, there you go. I'm going to bring that cartoon out again. And uh, <laughs> the, um, uh, I'm trying to think of how I would want to be most helpful in answering that and part the first thing that came to my mind is if you see the next presentation i will hopefully walk or stop well any of us go back a bit who's doing this oh ah right is it is it ah right let me make a choice um well first of all they they're the the company the, the below below that in the main uh, hmm. there was do you know what it's interesting that there's, there's very little process involved in that you know you're looking at a piece you can't see of course the 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 I'm looking at the the wattle tree the uh, the one with my image in it and the detail down the top two in the middle. I should find it myself. Yeah, okay, that one. All right, uh, sorry, I've just, been, I've just been bidden to stop. There, that, yeah. Well, it's okay. You, yeah, there's no, I'm sure you can hear me. So um, that was, coming back from Australia and I was there in the spring and everywhere there were these mimosa trees, acacia, acacia trees everywhere in the countryside. Um, I mean, it must have been an absolute hell for anybody with, uh, uh, you know, uh, who are allergic to these things, but I was just full of yellow. It was so 
and it's a color I've always avoided, yellow. Um, and it somehow they gave me permission to use it. And part of it was I had to do something for the show, for the exhibit. And this had, maybe I've got that wrong, but the dates. But I was also playing with the quill on the lettering and I was doing, um, again, I can't see it that clearly, I don't suppose you can, but I was actually using it. And then I was literally, as I came to a certain point, pressing on the quill to see what happened. And I found I got a fairly um, good repetition. I mean, it, it was a sort of um, very much the same kind of mark, almost like a blossom of a flower at the end of, of a thin line. So I was actually drawn into that by the feeling of making those marks and seeing how that worked. So what my process was organic and not cerebral um, and it was starting out with yellow starting out with australia starting out with the joy of spring and coming out there um, and the pleasure of playing with the quill and letting it make the marks for me and you it's not entirely successful, you know, on a little bit by little bit, but it did capture a moment um, of an emotion. And the emotion was fed by the, by the touch and the quality of the way the ink flowed. It's on a piece of old parchment, old, I and mean, I think it was sheepskin even. The sheepskin is parchment, vellum, calfskin normally. And it came out of an old roll of, um, old skins that were given to me and I think one of them had been in Edward Johnson's um, you know effects and somebody had bought them up from uh, some bits of his effects in the in the 40s and um, it was one of those it was a very poor piece of vellum for writing but, but used as a painting it was all right and underneath it one of my favorite bits and you can't see that I actually again got my fingers into the to this yellow dye that I was using and rubbed uh, rub my fingertips into into it and uh, beneath, beneath where the the tree was growing so that was purely like a painting so it wasn't uh and the actual wonderful uh, um poem i actually did capture it i was on the sort of what they call a station out there what you call a ranch uh, in the us um and um where that woman uh, grew up the woman poet who made it and i and her name escapes me, I've got to um, confess. Right, um, I, I will talk a bit more about process when I talk about some of the, um, some of the Bible um, stories next, next week. Great. Thanks. Thank you. So um, there is one apropos that uh, maybe uh, you can add to what I want to say about this question. So the, let's see if I can find the name of the person. Um, sorry, it's Goli Ostavar. She says, how do I start a guild in my city? So um, Goli, I just want to refer you to the YouTube uh, videos that we did about starting the Society for Calligraphy uh, that will be on the Society for Calligraphy website. If you go to the website on the left-hand side, you'll see the word YouTube, click on that, and you'll see two uh, parts to this uh, early um, organizing of the society. And my email is on the bottom of the flyer that I gave you right at the beginning of this talk. And I'd be happy to help you go through some particular steps. But you know, the key really for us was having a fabulous speaker bring us together. Um, and how did we get us together? We found ourselves because of classes that Maureen Nimoy is teaching and other people were teaching like Larry Brady. So those are the two elements. If you can bring uh, the people who are already studying together to uh, attend a lecture by somebody who will, you know, drum up enthusiasm and say, "Let's go for it!" Here's a sign-up sheet, and suddenly you'll have a number of people who want to get involved. You set a an ad hoc meeting of people who will set up a party and so on. So that's how we started ours, and how many have been started. Donald, would you thank you? Thank you. 
Um, I think that, um, yeah, I, don't, I mean, I would add to that that I don't, um, since I've been claiming a lot all along that everything that, you know, my involvements and things have been actually accidental and not planned. So I'm the last person in the world to tell you how to get started, um, really, apart from the fact that the track record, I would say it, it's a great thing, but go back, go back to that postcard that David McElberg's, that not postcard, the card that was so kindly sent to me by Moira, you know, um, um, I've forgotten where it is now, but it's somewhere. It's the very first one I did, but uh, thank you. Um, it is uh, this one. That is um, the, uh, I've lost it now. No, I've been lost. Ah, lower. I'll put it down there. You go. There you go. And go back to first principles. Um, Kitty was saying this the other day. Go back and think what do i love what do i what can i give and um if this is something like that the, the nuts and bolts the practicalities i can't help you with and i confess to not you know having had been involved with that kind of thing in and it is um there is um you you're creating us you, you create a, a a stage for people to come and share sharing and telling um what you do and what you don't know. Um, okay, so I'm going to wind up um, now, actually, um, with um, uh, going back to that conversation in Chicago in an Italian restaurant um, and the bottle of Chianti. And when I asked um, Father Eric Hollis what if he would like me to write the Bible for them. In fact, I didn't say the Bible, I said the Gospels. I mean, this is, he disagrees, so you can take your pick. Um, I said the Gospels, um, and he came back with, you know, the standard um, religious um, person's point of view, and he said, how much is it going to cost? And um, I, um, I don't know, I think I might have said a million dollars. Just, just because nobody's got any such figure in their heads, and um, they came back eventually um, and said, "Well, you know, you said you'd do this Bible for a million dollars. Well, whether you know anything about Bibles or not, there are only four books in, or five, in the in the um, in the four basically big chapters in the Gospels and Acts. And um, there's a whole lot more of the Old Testament and other things to go with it. But they were thinking that they could have all of it um, for the cost that I'd obviously very carefully thought out to say about the other. So however, that's when it started. And before long, um, and I'm talking now about the trailer for next week, um, um, we um, uh, can I go to the the next slide? And this is this is me um, signing out. Um, uh, yes. And so before long, uh, we spent. And again, this is in keeping with the spreading the word. When you start a project like the. Uh, re, 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 you know, transcribing the Bible and illuminating it and, 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 and interpreting it visually, uh, you've got to drum up um, money and you've got to drum up, um, um, you, you've got to spread out to see what the interest is to develop things of this kind. You're, talk, you're asking somebody to spend money on something that they can't see. They, you, they, they're they're buying into a dream and they had needed to get out to people to let people know about it and to talk about it publicize the idea and also to raise money to pay for it well the point i one of the points of the whole of this talk of this evening was spreading the word was i had learned a lot 
from being on these TV shows. I had sat next to a belly dancer on a talk show where every time she moved, she jingled and, and, and then been asked for my opinion about what I thought of from their home economics um, con um, uh, contributor, what I thought about um, donuts or, or muffins. And at the same time, you know, somebody else was <laughs> talking about, I don't know what, clay pigeons. I was trying to sell recipes for clay pigeons, you know, the kind that people shoot at, you know, in country, you know, for practice. And holding my own amongst that a lot um, was very useful for this next stage of my life, which took up the next 15 years and a lot of other people's too. And that's what we're going to next week. But um, uh, the, I'm going to sign off on one image um, to show that I didn't, I did, I was offered help from a lot of people and, and a wonderful woman, Lily uh, Ronka from New York, one of the kindest people and loveliest of teachers. Um, who was one of the first people with her husband who who was so um, welcoming when I first arrived in the US. Um, when she learned that I was going to be uh, writing um, a Bible, she sent me uh, a little package which contained in it a wind up toy, which when you wind it up, it actually writes and so I put a call in its hand and he, she had written on the DJ. And so she proposed this as to be my, my, my assistant for producing the St. John's Bible. I can't find him at the moment, but the minute I do, I will try and share it because you just wind up the little knob on the left hand side and he starts, believe me, he writes. And it's even got a nice bald head at the top, which matches me exactly and i'm going to say so everything remember play keep that going keep that spontaneity uh ready even for the most serious things um and put that pen in your hand and dip it in the ink goodbye everybody and thank you for listening thank you absolutely wonderful as always we'll see you all bye. next week september 25th come back bye, bye. 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 Bye.